Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time to take a look at the GPU market once again and see what has been happening across the last month. The major news out of April is, of course, the launch of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070, which, fair to say, hasn't been the biggest graphics card launch of all time. Fairly mixed reviews overall, somewhat better value than the previous generation models it's replacing, but hardly an exciting uplift. So let's see how well the RTX 4070 has launched and what impact it's had on the market. But before we do, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte's GeForce RTX 40 series laptops. The Aorus 15X and 17X are premium gaming machines with up to NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop graphics, delivering a great ray tracing experience in a performance optimized design. Thanks to the new Ada Lovelace architecture, these new systems support DLSS3 frame generation, enhanced max-Q efficiency, and super-fast AI acceleration. You may also be tempted by the excellent Gigabyte G5, which offers a range of powerful RTX 40 series GPUs and the latest 13th gen Intel processors, all in an attractive, great value package. For creators on the go, Gigabyte's Aero series have you covered. The Aero 14 is just 17mm thin, supports HDMI 2.1 and Thunderbolt 4, plus it has fast CPU and GPU options. Need a bit more screen real estate? The Aero 16 has you covered. For more information, please click the link in the video description. There's good and bad news associated with the RTX 4070's launch, depending on your perspective. The good news for buyers is that stock and availability of MSRP models is abundant, and demand for even the cheapest models has been relatively weak, so it's super easy to pick up a 4070 even a week or two after its launch. If you head to Newegg right now, you'll find half a dozen models available for $600 US. There is really no reason whatsoever to spend more, and this is a good thing because the RTX 4070 is really only an even remotely attractive product at the MSRP. It's not good at $650, it's terrible at $700. Nvidia at the very least needed to ensure it was launching in huge numbers at the $600 MSRP, and that's exactly what has occurred at least in the United States. Some other countries, and this is region dependent, have kind of been shafted on pricing initially, including right here in Australia. Over on Nvidia's RTX 4070 product page, they list the starting price for this model at $1,109 Australian, which after equating for local tax, converts into a US MSRP of $675. It seems that to begin with, this was NVIDIA's strategy for the 4070 in other regions. Sell it for a higher price, but in the days since, launch pricing has corrected somewhat, and now you can find models that are priced well below what NVIDIA lists on their website. The cheapest I could find were cards priced around $940 AUD, which is where the 4070 should sit, as that equates into a US price of just $570 before tax. But there are still lots of other models being sold more around $1,100. It's quite a weird situation where there is a large price disparity between variants within a GPU family. And based on what we've heard, this is down to NVIDIA messing around with the price they've set in our region. They weren't overly keen on setting a $600 equivalent MSRP for Australia and were changing the price right up to the last minute. A quick check of other regions does show that most countries right now have models available at the correct MSRP. In Canada, for example, the cheapest models on Newegg are 810 Canadian, which is very close to the $600 US MSRP after conversion. In the UK, the cheapest models are £590, so again, about $610 US after equating for tax. Some regions do also have a large discrepancy between the cheapest and most expensive RTX 4070 models, but at least those MSRP cards seem to be readily available a week after launch in most countries. The bad news for Nvidia, which is also good news for consumers, is that the RTX 4070 is selling badly even at the MSRP. This should be pretty obvious from the abundant stock at $600 that never sold out even on day one, typically for any even remotely in demand product, the cheapest models will be snapped up relatively quickly. This never happened for the RTX 4070, as the reception for this model among the PC gaming community has been lackluster, to say the least. Things are even more dire when speaking to retailers though, especially here in Australia where pricing was set too high at launch. We've heard multiple accounts of terrible sales locally, which likely spurred some after-launch price reductions to more around the $950 Aussie mark, as cards just weren't moving when the price was so close to the RTX 4070 Ti. 
One retailer told us sales volumes for the 4070 were even worse than the 4070 Ti at launch, suggesting another RTX 4080 situation where cards are likely to sit on shelves for months. The only current generation models that have seen any sort of reasonable demand have been the RTX 4090 and AMD's Radeon RX 7900 XTX, although things have been picking up somewhat for the 7900 XT following recent price corrections. While this is bad for Nvidia's bottom line, it's good for consumers. If you think the RTX 4070 is a poor value product, the last thing you want as a potential buyer is for that card to sell really well, sending the message to Nvidia that this pricing is acceptable. They are receiving the opposite message loud and clear right now. I mean, just think of how laughably bad the RTX 4070 Ti and RTX 4070 MSRPs could have been if the 4080 sold super well at $1,200. We'd probably still have the 4070 Ti named the 4080 12GB at $900, and the 4070 would be coming in at, I don't know, $750 or something silly. What's unclear right now is whether Nvidia is going to do anything substantial to counter consumer pushback, like lowering prices, or whether this is all part of a longer term plan. If Nvidia is more interested in a long term strategy of reconditioning the market to accept higher prices, they might not care that much about short term sales of these models. That would be a terrible outcome for the market, but we're not going to have a clear look at that until their financials for this quarter are revealed and they have to field investor questions. It's also important to remember that the RTX 4070 has been released with zero competition as far as current generation models go. Nvidia can do basically whatever they want until AMD responds with a more affordably priced RDNA 3 card. The RTX 4070's launch has had a limited impact on the rest of the GPU market. There have been a few localized discounts for various products, but otherwise no substantial price movement. On the Nvidia side, the direct performance competitors to the RTX 4070, like the RTX 3080 10GB, are all sold out and have been for several months now, which means there is little competition from older models being sold at a lower price. Nice move Nvidia. The only other card that saw any substantial price drop is the RTX 3070 Ti, which was being sold at the $600 price point now occupied by the 4070. So the cheapest 3070 Ti model on Newegg has dropped to $540 this month. Just based on the amount of models being sold, it seems the 3070 Ti won't be in stock for much longer, although the $540 price point is hardly compelling. Also not very compelling is the RTX 3070, which remains at $500 US. If Nvidia wants to clear this model from the market to make room for newer products, They'll need to do better than that. Right now, it's worse value than the 4070, and really a two-year-old product being sold at the MSRP in the face of new generation cards, it's nothing to be excited about. On the AMD side of things, the only move that has been made recently is the price reduction on the RX 6950 XT, with AMD seemingly wanting this card priced as close to the RTX 4070 as possible. Right now, it sits at $630 US, which is a very compelling price point, as Steve covered in his 4070 review. Around this sort of $500 to $700 range, both the 6950 XT and 4070 are probably the only cards you'd consider, and I'd say the 6950 XT is making a strong case for itself, being only $30 more than the 4070, while offering 16% more rasterization performance on average at 1440p plus more VRAM. Other AMD cards in the mid-range haven't moved much in price. The RX 6800 XT is available for $540, down slightly from last month, while the RX 6800 has remained steady at $470. Both are reasonable buys, but perhaps not as eye-catching as that 6950 XT. Then for the lower parts of the market, pricing is quite solid right now. Most models are at the cheapest price they have ever been, including the RX 6600, which has fallen to just $200 US, which is an excellent price for that mainstream model. Current generation models also continue to see price adjustments on a monthly basis. All models from Nvidia and AMD saw price movement compared to last month. For some cards, that meant returning to the MSRP, like the 4090 and 4070 Ti. For others, this meant price drops below MSRP, including the RTX 4080, which dropped to $1,150, a first for this poorly received product in low demand. It's taken a while for Nvidia and AIBs to realize the 4080 was just never going to sell at $1,200 US in the current market, but these days there are actually multiple models available all below MSRP. I'd still say that $1,150 is far too expensive, however, it is a step in the right direction, so hopefully there are more corrections to come. 
AMD's RDNA 3 models are also both now available under MSRP with the 7900 XTX sitting at $960 US and the 7900 XT4 into $780, which is now quite a bit below its $900 launch price. Both prices are a bit flaky and seem to fluctuate on a daily basis, but these days it does seem possible to grab newer AMD cards for reasonable prices, so I'd be looking out for those occasional sales. Meanwhile, Intel Arc GPUs are holding steady, with the exception being the Arc A778GB, which dropped in price by $30 US, adapting to AMD's pricing for their mainstream models that also continues to change a little bit. The used market hasn't responded in any significant way to the introduction of the RTX 4070, although the 4070 has only been available for a week now, and usually the used market is slower to respond than the new retail market. For NVIDIA's RTX 30 series, the biggest news was a $50 price cut for the RTX 3080 Ti on average, though I suspect this will fall further in the next few months. The RTX 3080 Ti is only 15% faster at 4K than the RTX 4070, and right now a used 3080 Ti will set you back 9% more than a brand new 4070. That's not a compelling price at all, and neither is the 3080 12GB at $591 on average. The 3080 10GB and below are all pretty normal though, with used 3080s offering similar performance to the 4070 at a 14% discount. AMD GPU prices haven't changed all that much though, pretty consistent trends we are seeing here. The closest model in performance to the RTX 4070 is the 6800 XT, which is being sold for $475 used on average these days. That's a 21% discount, more than the RTX 3080, which is to be expected given AMD's weaker feature set. That said, I'd probably be expecting to see the 3080 and 6800 XT see further price drops in the used market over the next few months, Lower tier cards are holding steady though. For older GPU families, nothing much to report. The RTX 20 series hasn't changed significantly on the used market, though it is now interesting to see the RTX 2080 Ti is worth more used than the RTX 3070, which has similar performance. Perhaps the VRAM difference is coming more into play as these cards age, the 2080 Ti having 11 gigabytes versus the 3070 at just 8 gigabytes. In the months prior, both cards have been very similar in price most of the time. Now the 2080 Ti has a 5% higher price, but not much more to report with the other models. The GTX 16 series, again, nothing has really changed here. We're still seeing all models priced below $150 US. AMD's RDNA 2 series is also quite cheap these days and would probably be the preferred option for budget shoppers interested in a GPU for around that $140 mark. The RX 5700 is about 30% faster than the GTX 1660 Ti at the same price, while the RX 5500 XT is also faster than the GTX 1650 Super, again at around the same price. So that's the GPU market as it stands right now. The introduction of the RTX 4070 hasn't done a heap to shake things up, GPU buyers really aren't that interested in the 4070 at $600 US, leaving plenty of stock on shelves. Such a low level of interest has perhaps surprised us a little, as the 4070 is one of the better value cards on the market these days. But it seems that the PC community isn't interested in a new GPU just being slightly or somewhat better value than existing options. That isn't good enough. It's instead going to take a really compelling product offering outstanding value for things to pick up again. There have been a few localized price adjustments in response to the 4070's introduction, like further price cuts for the RX 6950 XT and a new low price for remaining 3070 Ti stock, but if you are hoping to see big price cuts, that hasn't happened. Even the used market hasn't really flinched here. Remember the days of people dumping their old GPUs for super cheap right before a new excellently priced card launched? That hasn't happened with this launch, not even close. What's really lacking at the moment is a competitor from AMD in the $500 range. Nothing much will change until the 4070 has more competition. It's been four months since the first 7000 series GPUs launched without a peep from AMD about expanding the lineup. So hopefully they do something soon. With RDNA 2, there was a four month gap between the 6800 XT launch and the 6700 XT launch. So we should be seeing something like a 7800 XT or 7700 XT launch around now. Fingers crossed we won't be waiting much longer. Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update. If you do appreciate these videos, then consider supporting us on Patreon and Floatplane. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord community, a really great place to chat about tech and all that sort of thing. We've got monthly live streams, BTS videos, plenty of good stuff there. So thanks for watching. 
and I'll catch you in the next one.